I can't stop thinking about Bobby. Not all the thoughts are pleasant, but she's in them all. And what does that tell you? That such a big part of my life can't be so easily cut out. I have to agree with you there. I'm still so angry, though. Tiffany thinks that I'm trying to punish death for taking BJ away. But since I can't punish death, then I'm going to punish Bobby instead. But I don't know. You know. I thought Bobby had made me angry enough without taking BJ away. You know, I just keep thinking about all the devastating events that happened to you. One right on top of the other. And it's pretty easy to see how they might get a little mixed up. Bobby was obsessed with Damien. That is real. She's still obsessed with Damien. That's real. These are not my fantasies. Yeah, well, I guess I can't argue with you here. Do you remember when we first met, you pointed out my need to control things? No. Oh. <laughs> yes. I, I, it was my first and strongest impression of you. I mean, you had created this perfect world with a perfect family, and I know you would do anything to protect that. No intrusions allowed. And I guess that was out of fear of losing it. I was the nicest guy on earth. That was my weapon, Mr. Accommodating. And I accommodated myself right out of a marriage. <laughs> you make it sound as if you drove her away. I know that Bobby still loves you. But she stopped being in love with me because she wanted something that I couldn't give her, and Damien could, that danger. And I can't be that. I don't want to be that. Well, then I guess you took a big step away from being Mr. Accommodating, didn't you? Is that good? I hate losing control. Although in the last few weeks, I've really been out of control. Well, that's perfectly understandable. Your anger is very natural. You know, my big problem is I like being Mr. Nice Guy. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there isn't. It's a wonderful thing. Nice Guy doesn't even seem adequate to describe what you did for Maxie when she needed a heart. You talk about being out of control. You took a horrible situation, an impossible situation, and you turned it into a miracle. You gave that little girl a chance at life. There's no other choice to make. Then why is there any other choice with Bobby? If she's willing to talk to you, why can't you talk to her? You obviously still love her. I cannot bear the thought of someone else making love to my wife. You still love her. I know that you didn't ask for this fight. But, you know, you can lie down and give up, or you can fight to get Bobby back. And maybe you won't have that perfect family that you thought you had, but maybe you'll get something better or something stronger. So what have I got to lose that I haven't already lost, right? And what have you got to gain? I'll think about it. <laughs> well, I guess that's all anybody can ask. You just leave the door open a crack so that a little bit of hope can sneak in there. Would you like some more coffee? No. Tell me something. How do you find the energy to fight City Hall? Isn't there a little baby down there? Oh, yes. And I tell you, every time she kicks me, I want to get up and fight harder to save this neighborhood. And in all honesty, will it make a difference? Well, I guess I feel the same way you do. I have something wonderful here to protect and preserve. And Luke and I waited a very long time to be a part of a community, and I just can't afford to even think about losing this battle. 
So the picture emerging here of Councilman Blake is of one snaggletooth little bear who lives pretty damn high on the hog. I would say pretty high. So is Carl. That's close. Mm -hmm. What about real estate? Well, the family has a summer place on the river, and they have a big old house at the edge of the Charles Street neighborhood, as a matter of fact. Oh, at the edge, but outside. Right. And I met his wife. She's nice. She works for the parks department. Wait a minute, you mean they're both? They're, they're both working for the city? Mm-hmm. What about kids? There's two kids, they're both in private school, as I've been told. Well, I'd say they live pretty damn well for civil servants, wouldn't you? Right. But can we prove anything? Well, we're gonna try. Tiffany Hill is trying to dig up a little verification of Blake's taxable income, and maybe we can put two and two together and come up with five. I like the way you count. <laughs>